Pedestrian safety is a major issue in New Jersey. From 2006 to 2010, New Jersey had 786 pedestrian fatalities and over 33,000 injuries. As a result, New Jersey has been designated as one of 15 pedestrian safety focus states by the Federal Highway Administration. Statistics tell some of the story, but all you have to do is go for a walk to understand what New Jersey pedestrians encounter every single day. Being able to cross the street safely is critical for all pedestrians, but is particularly important for the young, the elderly, and those who are mobility impaired. The New Jersey Division of Highway Traffic Safety helped establish a Pedestrian Safety Enforcement Program, or PSE. It's designed to improve pedestrian safety through high visibility enforcement. PSC refers to structured traffic safety operations designed to reinforce the motorist's legal obligation to stop and stay stopped for a pedestrian in a crosswalk. PSC operations are a simple and effective way to educate motorists on the duties and obligations outlined in Title 39. PSC operations are easily carried out and they enhance safety in your community. The PSC program includes regional training, peer-to-peer -peer training, and the resources you need to carry out operations in your department. The New Jersey Division of Highway Traffic Safety continues to advance this program and funding may be available for your community. Contact your regional highway traffic safety representative for more information. This short roll call video helps explain key elements in carrying out PSE operations in your department. Pedestrian Safety Enforcement Training, or PSE, is an important tool that you can use to improve pedestrian safety in your community. This roll call video can be used to refresh training that you may have already received or can serve as a primer on how to carry out these operations in your community. Before you begin PSC operations, make sure that command staff have been briefed on what PSC is, how it will be carried out in your community, and what the operational details are. One of the first things you need to do is survey your community for crosswalks for PSC operations. You will want to target well-marked crosswalks near downtowns, schools, and areas with a crash history, areas of high need where pedestrians would or should be anticipated. This helps eliminate the excuse that I couldn't see the crosswalk or nobody walks here. Consider coordinating with your community engineer about low-cost improvements such as high-visibility road striping and warning signs to bring as much attention to the crosswalks as possible. During operations, Rotate enforcement details through multiple sites so the location of operations isn't predictable. We also highly recommend that you brief the local prosecutor and judge on PSC and how operations are carried out. That way, they aren't surprised by an influx of citations and will understand that operations are structured and objective. Pedestrian safety enforcement operations fill two key roles, education and enforcement. If you're just starting operations in your community, we suggest that you start with a warning phase. During the warning phase, officers educate the motorists on why they've been stopped, provide them with literature, and make it a part of an overall media blitz to really get the word out about what you're doing. Many violators are unaware of the law and their obligations. Taking time to educate motorists and to let them know about the program before citations are issued can help sell the program to the community and provide exposure to the issues. Basically, uh, I'm going to give you some literature here. This goes over um, the law in the state of New Jersey as far as uh, stopping for pedestrians and crosswalks and also what the fines are. Yeah, it's two points, $200 fine plus four costs. Remember, education is one of the most critical aspects of PSC operations. We want to change behavior and putting the pedestrian on the motorist radar is a culture change. Media coverage is a key to educating people and providing exposure to your operations. We suggest a media blitz before beginning a high visibility PSC program and media outreach during regular operations. Some of the things you can do to provide exposure to your operations are, invite media to observe operations, both television and newspaper. Issue press releases and provide information to local community websites and blogs. Reach out to community stakeholders. Some examples are local advocacy groups, businesses, schools, and places of worship. They're oftentimes your biggest supporters and can help provide positive community support for your program. Have educational literature to hand out during operations. This can be warning flyers with an educational message or department-approved literature from the Division of Highway Traffic Safety or other sources. Next, we're going to look at the operational details of a PSE operation. 
Choose one of the crosswalks you have identified as a location for an enforcement operation. Using the chart based on the yellow light signal timing formula from the ITE report determining vehicle signal change and clearance intervals, measure off from the edge of the crosswalk the appropriate distance to create the objective decision point. This point is a location where the motorist has ample time to spot the pedestrian and come to a safe stop before the crosswalk. Mark the decision point with a cone, paint, ribbon, or anything that is clearly visible from the crosswalk. Operations can be carried out in one or both directions of travel depending on manpower. Next, identify the safety zones where violators will be pulled over. This can be a parking lot, on-street parking, a wide shoulder, or a side street. You can also cone off a safety zone if space permits. If side streets or on-street parking aren't available for operations, coordinate with local property owners to use their parking lots before beginning enforcement operations. 256 from 306, can you just give me a wave in the air, please? Make sure that the officers who will be stationed at the safety zone have a clear view of the crosswalk and the decoy pedestrian who will be crossing there. If possible, station a vehicle with a mobile video recorder with a view of the crosswalk. Video recording operations is ideal, but if that isn't possible, then document the operational setup with pictures and diagrams. You may need to provide this information if a violator chooses to dispute a citation. Let's talk about the different roles for officers during PSC operations. First, let's talk about the decoy pedestrian. The decoy pedestrian should be a non-uniformed officer in bright clothes. Remember, we want the pedestrian to be as visible as possible for their safety, as well as to help eliminate the excuse, I didn't see them, from violators. The decoy pedestrian will step into the crosswalk when a motorist is approaching the decision point previously marked out by the PSC team. The decoy pedestrian should cross the road using proper crossing technique. The next role we will discuss is the spotter. The spotter should have a two-way radio on a dedicated channel. One of the flagmen at each of the safety zones will also have a radio. The spotter will communicate to the flagman the identity of motorists who did not stop for the decoy pedestrian who should be flagged over to the safety zone, educated on their responsibilities, and either given a warning or a citation. Tag, gray Nissan, New York tag, left lane, dark gray Nissan, New York tag in the left lane. The spotter should be stationed with a clear view of the crosswalk, the decoy pedestrian, and the markings that represent the decision point. The last team member we will discuss is the flagman. The flagman will operate in teams of one to three officers. Typically, one officer flags identified motorists into the safety zone where the other flagmen educate the motorists on their responsibility towards pedestrians and give them a warning or a citation. The flagmen also record pertinent information about motorists who are stopped for data collection purposes and to be used as evidence in case a citation is disputed. You would call those cars in in that direction, right? Remember, safety is critical in these operations. You will be operating on roadways with moving traffic. Never assume that a motorist will stop for you and make sure you have sight lines to your fellow officers in the detail. Let's discuss proper crossing technique. It's important that the decoy pedestrian clearly communicate their intent to cross. This is done by stepping into the crosswalk and signaling to the motorist the desire to cross. We do this by facing the vehicle, leaning towards the crossing, possibly extending your hand, and trying to make eye contact. Clearly conveying the intent to cross is important because otherwise motorists may say they didn't know the officer want to cross or that PSC operations are a gotcha campaign. If the roadway has parking or a shoulder, the officer should proceed into the crosswalk so that they are at the edge of the parking lane or shoulder but are now visible to motorists and the flagman team who are observing them. Remember, don't force the stop. What we mean by that is allow the motorist to make a good or bad decision after making it clear you want to cross. Don't walk out beyond the edge of the lane or shoulder. The motorist should make their decision about what they are going to do while you're in a place of safety. We don't want the message to be that motorists only have to stop if the pedestrians put themselves in harm's way. If you're carrying out operations on multiple lane roads, you must be especially vigilant and must observe multi-lane crossing protocol. Multi-lane crossings are statistically the most dangerous roadways to cross as a pedestrian. They're sometimes higher speed and higher volume, and the crossing pedestrian is exposed for a greater length of time. It's important when crossing these roadways that the decoy pedestrian treat each lane of travel as a separate crossing. 
The decoy should only proceed into the roadway after the vehicle in the lane of travel they are trying to cross has clearly seen them and is stopping for them. At that point, the decoy pedestrian should proceed to the edge of that lane of travel and make sure that the lane is clear of oncoming traffic or that the vehicle coming along that lane of travel has seen the decoy pedestrian and is stopping. So as I'm crossing, I'm, I'm stopping for each individual lane. And as I proceed, I'm, I'm going to make sure that particular lane I'm crossing is stopped before I continue on. The decoy pedestrian should proceed in this way across all lanes of travel. It's critical to maintain staged crossing discipline. The decoy pedestrian must stop at each lane of crossing. You may be screened from oncoming traffic by vehicles that have stopped for you. It's illegal to drive around a vehicle that has stopped for a pedestrian in the crosswalk. This is overtaking and is very dangerous. Any motorist doing this should be issued a summons. When operating on a multiple lane crossing, make sure that the spotter and the decoy pedestrian are separate jobs. At low speed, two lane roads, the spotter and decoy jobs can sometimes be performed by the same officer. This should not be done at multiple lane crossings. These are the basics of a PSC operation. In 2012, over 60 communities in New Jersey have carried out operations. They are simple and effective, and we hope you carry them out in your community. Remember, pedestrian safety is a serious issue, and one that law enforcement can serve a key role in improving.